Praise the Lord. Everybody love the Lord tonight. Amen. It's good to be in the house of God. Amen. We uh, trust you'll go home feeling better than you did when you come. That's what it does. It lifts you up. Amen. Amen, Amen to God. You know, the natural man can't live without beans and cornbread. I mean, maybe beans and cornbread, but I mean something like that, you know. But uh, the spiritual man can't live without spiritual bread to eat. Amen. Amen. We've got to be fed. Man cannot live by bread alone. You heard that said, haven't you? That's a true, that's a true saying. Amen. We have to have... I tell people sometimes, look, if you can only get the sun school, if you can only be fed, if you can only be taught, then you'd be surprised what a difference will make in your life. And it does. And, and almost inevitably, when they start to come into where they can be taught, they kind of come alive and they kind of get into the thing. That's what it's all about. We're glad you're here. Amen. And we've got, we've got a very special service tonight. Uh, besides having Brother Bullock with us, he's always special. We're glad to have him and his good wife with us tonight. But we're going to have a baptism tonight uh, for Brother Zach. Amen. He's the star of the show tonight. I want you to understand something now. You know, this is going to be a little bit different baptism possibly than what you've seen. And that's okay. Uh, because we have to be, there's certain things we have to do for him in his special situation. Amen. And that it's not for you that they're able to be baptized. You have to go down in that watery grave, and and that's just the way it is. But uh, but God has has always, uh, you know, made plans for other things. Yeah. Did you know that uh, a lot of things are being done outside dispensation? And when we want Enoch, you know, he uh, Enoch was just translated. He just went to be with God. Now that wasn't supposed to happen in the rapture, but God saw fit for Enoch to be translated. Amen. So God has always worked from time to time outside His dispensation. And another thing that He gave the power and authority to the ministry. He said, whatsoever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. Amen. So we're calling this a baptism tonight in the name of the Lord. Can you agree with me? Amen. Amen. That's what it's going to be. Praise the Lord. We're all going to God as a baptism and God's going to receive it as a baptism, this is going to be a great day for this young man. He loves Jesus. Now look at him. He loves the Lord. Let me tell you. Praise the Lord. He's got such a wonderful attitude for the, even for what he's been through. We appreciate him. We love him so much. We're just proud of him. Hallelujah. Oh, he gets me to get anger sometimes, but me too. Me too can handle it. But God is good. That's what we're going to do right there. at the beginning of service. We're going to dismiss and go over there and in that little building, and of course everybody can't get in there. We understand that. You just wait patiently on us. If anybody wants to come, we want you to. But we're going to get him baptized. Praise the Lord. God is so good. Amen. Let's look unto him right now. Father, we love you tonight. We are thankful to be gathered in your name. How good it is and pleasant for brethren to dwell together in unity. Oh, God bless us, we pray. Receive our sacrifice of worship and praise tonight. And honor this what we're about to do. Hallelujah. You've done it for me. You've done it for many. When I know you'll do it for Brother Zach. We're believing. We're expecting. And we're glad to be a part of it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Keep your head up on us. And bless the churches everywhere. We're men are gathered in your name tonight, Father. And we'll give you the praise and the glory and honor. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And we're going to sing a few congregations. Then we're going to be this ministry. Just a little bit.
Page 336. Jesus forgives and forgives. That is that. When it goes down in the water, our sins are gone.
testify to love. Just follow. It's Kitty. <laughs> or G, I mean.
hours in my own world. <laughs>
church. I meant to do it this, this morning and I uh, forgot it. But yeah, there's uh, quite a few things, I mean, um, that we need in our food pantry. And uh, So anyway, tomorrow I am going to go shopping for it. So any, any, I, oh, if you give me money or if you want to buy for it, you know, we can always use uh, pastas and uh, what? Cereals and canned meats, anything like that there. Um, our vegetables are still in pretty good shape, but um, the other things that um, um, sugar, flour, oil, all that kind of stuff is really, really low. And uh, so anyway, um, it's getting near the end of the month and we usually get pretty hit pretty hard near the end of the month because people's food stamps is run out. And, so yeah, this anyway. old church has fed a lot of people. You'd be surprised. Yes, they have. We have. We uh, we don't get government subsidy or anything. Um, we just, you know, the church takes care of it themselves. And um, God has really blessed us. I mean, we've been doing this for several, several years now, and uh, we don't turn anybody away. The Nazarene Church sends people to us all the time because they don't open any time that uh, somebody is in need. They say, "Oh, go see Gateway Tabernacle now." They'll fix you up, <laughs> and we do, and we do. No matter when, what day it is, and I had a girl call the other day that her her <coughs> baby was really in need, and yeah, I, baby, they will be I said, if if you come on, I come on over, I will meet you at the fellowship hall and, and fix them up some food. And uh, but yeah, especially if they got little, ch little children, well, we could never turn a child away. Amen. But God is good, and He does He does provide. He has. And we do thank the people of our church for providing uh, the food for the food pantry. And it's just, it's been a blessing to, you know, to each and every one. And there's from time from time people in the church that right here in our church needs help. You know, you don't, you don't think about it, but a lot of times there is people or someone in your family, you know, that will need uh, food. I, I, years ago, I can remember, if it hadn't been for a church bringing us food, uh, we wouldn't have had anything to eat, you know? And uh, so, yes, <laughs> Kevin said, I understand that too. And so we, we do appreciate each and every one. And so like if, if, you have, if the Lord lays on your heart to give a donation towards the food pantry, well, after church is over, if you will come give to me, and I promise you, I spend every every nickel that I get in yeah, donation. Bless some of my and <laughs> some of his, he says. But God's good, and he does supply. So uh, we're going to, um, uh, how's Sister Wendy or Sister Monica, somebody is singing a song, and we're taking up our evening offering, and this offering goes to our evangelists. Every penny of it goes to our evangelists, unless it's tithing. If it's tithing, I always take it out. If it's tithing, I know you right on tithing but but everything else that we take up goes to our evangelists to see.
Corinthians chapter 10. He's really been looking kind of pitiful sitting over all by himself. He does. Yeah. That can be a little flat. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, How come you didn't wear your suit? Well, I just kind of this shirt. You don't have to wear that suit. That's why I didn't wear one. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to fit in. <laughs> Second Corinthians chapter ten, beginning at verse number three. Are you there? Amen. For though we walk in the flesh. We do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ, and having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Do ye look on things after the outward appearance? If any man trust to himself that he is Christ, let him of himself think this again, that as he is Christ, even so are we Christ's. Heavenly Father, I thank you tonight for your word. I pray that you'll lead us into revelation knowledge, Lord, that you'll give us a, a, a clear understanding of your word. Lord, that our hearts would be open to receive. Our minds would be open to be to, to understand, Lord, and our ears would be receptive. Lord, I just pray that your will be done tonight. And Lord, in everything that is said and done, we give you glory and praise in Jesus' name. And everybody say amen. 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 For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. But yet it seems like the flesh is what gives us so much trouble. Amen. Seems like that's where the battles at. In reality, the battle's not in the flesh, the battle's in the mind. That's where the battle takes place. It's in your mind. I want to take for a thought tonight, just for a little bit, I'm not going to hold you very long, but, but I'm going to take for a thought tonight, your mind is the control center of your life. Your mind is the, is the control center of your life. What you set your mind on, thank you, sis. What you set your mind on is where your life will go. The direction of your life is dependent upon the direction that your mind is set. How you think, what you allow to come into your mind, what you allow your mind to dwell on. That will ultimately become the area that you're going to walk in in your life. Be it good thoughts, be it bad thoughts, be it thoughts of victory, be it thoughts of defeat, whatever it may be, that's the direction you'll go. If that's what's on your mind. In order to prosper in your flesh, or in your spirit, man, you, you, you have got to prosper in your mind. Romans 12 says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto the Lord, which is your reasonable service, and not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Everybody say, my mind needs to be renewed. My mind needs to be renewed. The problem that we have is what we get our minds set on. Have you ever tried to deal with a stubborn person? Yeah. 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 I was going to say there's none of those kind of people here tonight. Yes, we are. There they are. There they are. You know you can't.
can't do with someone who's stubborn. They get their mind set on something. <laughs> and they're not going to move no matter what you say, no matter what you do. Their mind is set. They get their mind set so because of their own opinions and their own ideas and their, and, and their own readings and their own situations and they make up their mind and that's it. And you can't change it. And I'm going to tell you something, your life will remain the same until you change your thinking. So whatever your thinking is tonight, in order for your life to turn back into a better road, into a healthier, into a healthier, prosperous way, you've got to change the way you think. And by the way you change the way you think is by what you let your mind be fed. Whatever you allow to come into your mind, that's going to settle down in your soul and in your spirit. And that's how your walk's going to be. Anger is something that is dealt with with the mind. Anger is something that you choose to do. Nobody can make you mad. Now I know several of you, you will probably disagree with me, but it is the gospel truth that nobody can make you mad. You choose to get that way. It's a choice. And it's a choice based on what's in your mind. Amen? Don't get quiet on me now. Bless you, I, 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 I'll preach a long time if you want to get quiet on me. Didn't look like soak up to me. Looks like the city. Okay. Your mind is giving you the pictures of your future. Your mind is projecting your future. It's putting out the future before you. So if, you're, if your mind is filled with doubt and unbelief, that's what your future holds, is doubt and unbelief. Let something change your mind. Amen? And the one thing about Christians is this. We end up not being too far from like the world is. We get saved, but we still live pretty close to the world. Come on. Still live pretty close to the pretty close to the world. Amen. You never know who's watching you. True. And you never know who cares. I think, if I, if I got this story right, I, I think Julie was reading this to me off of Facebook. So, some of you, some of you, I know right where you're at spiritually because I read your Facebook. <laughs> I read it. I read it every day. There's not, there's not a day goes by that I don't read it. Who <laughs> got too much stuff on my hand? No, I'm getting certain notes together. <laughs> and. Uh, I think this is where we got this at, or I heard this somewhere. See where my mind's at. I don't know. It's about 
I think my mind needs some of your oxygen is what it needs. I think so. Herbal German. But there was a new pastor in town. Oh, yeah, I know what you're talking about. You see it on Facebook? Yeah, very good. Well, don't tell her. Let me tell her. I saw that. I mean, do you see that too? It's on Facebook. It's on Facebook. Yeah, that's on Facebook. There's a new pastor in town, and he gets on a bus to go somewhere. I'm going to tell my version of it. He gets on a bus to go somewhere in the city. And when he gets to his seat, he discovers that the bus driver gave him a quarter too much money back. <coughs> He contemplated what to do with that quarter. He thought, as many people as get on this bus, they're not going to miss a quarter. I mean, it's not going to be missed. He probably doesn't know he did it. So he, 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 he contemplated on his trip what to do with that quarter. Finally got to his destiny. And before he got off the bus, he turned to the bus driver and he said, Sir, here, you gave me a quarter too much. And the bus driver said, You're the new pastor in town, aren't you? <laughs> he said, Yeah. He said, I did that on purpose just to see what you would do. <laughs> You never know who's watching you. That's right. You never know who's got an eye on you. <coughs> oh no, I know that one too. Yeah, it is. It is. There, there was uh, uh, there was one word that the uh, uh, the speaker. Of the, uh, the, for that night of service was an evangelist. And he sat outside the door of the church, stood outside the door of the church, all in ragged clothes. And, uh, all in ragged, uh huh? He was going to be the new pastor of a big mega church. Yeah. And, and, uh, Everybody was excited about it. I can't remember now exactly how it turned out, but when they when they called when they called up the new pastor, it was him. I can't remember now what he said. He was sitting out there and he said he went and he sat by people and he said they'd move over and right. went, they wouldn't shake his hand or right. look down on him and his clothes and stuff and, and said when they called the new preacher and everybody looked around and they looked over this this guy and he stood up and he said, Not one of them. Uh, greeted me or none of you. If you put them all in their place, that's yeah. <laughs> it. didn't, did it say whether he stayed the pastor or not? <laughs> <laughs> he gave them the word and said, what you do until least the least of these you do unto me. What a way to start a morning service. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 What a way to start what a, what, what, what a message to preach on your first time there. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. See, people get things on their mind and they get their mindset. Prejudices are birthed out of our mindset. I mean, prejudices are birthed out of things that you don't understand. You don't understand it, therefore you're against it. Because I don't understand it. I get more and more and more concerned about the road that our government is traveling. And I am so concerned that it's going to infiltrate the church in a very negative way. There was a family out in California that was having having Bible studies at their house. And one evening the police showed up. 
and shut their Bible study down because of complaints about the Bible study and they said that it was not commercially zoned so they couldn't have church there. That's just the start. That's just the start. All it would take would be a bunch of, just a few neighbors around here get upset about you being too loud or about, about, about there being too many cars around or about, about there being too many inconveniences around and, 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 and guess what? Uh, you'd have the wrong politician in and it can come back and bite you. Because people have mindsets. Your mind right now is telling you what your future is going to be. You say, well, but I don't I don't I don't understand why why that would have anything what that would have anything to do with it. Well, in Colossians, the Bible tells us that we're to set our mind on things that are above and not on things that are on the earth. Amen. Things that are above and things that are not on the earth. As you begin to see yourself, listen to this, as you begin to see yourself as God sees you, you will begin to rise to a new level and experience the higher ways of Christ. If you begin, in other words, if you begin to have the thoughts, let this mind be in you, which was in Christ Jesus. If you let those thoughts be in you and see yourself in Christ and Christ in you, you rise above the carnal thinking of this world and you'll set on yourself the mind of Christ. And when you set yourself on the mind of Christ, you're going to see great things move in your life. Amen. You know we live in a troubled world. <coughs> it's been it's been troubled for quite some time. They've came out with a new prediction. I read it just the other day about a, a new prediction that I forget now what month it is now in, in 2014 that we're all going to leave from this world. That Jesus is coming back in 2014. <coughs> And, uh, if that's true, then we can all go out and just have a big old party for a little while and just get ourselves right with this beach. It's back. <laughs> you ain't coming back till 2014. I might as well live like hell in 2013 and have a party. Now you think, you think, the Bible says that no man knows the day or the hour. There's a reason for that. There's a reason for that. They go out and have a party. Yeah. That's the way minds run. Yeah, I just... I've got to the month of November. I don't have to worry about getting saved. I'll start coming to church in October. It'd be good for a month. I'll make it. Now see, you know God doesn't think that way. No. Huh? Amen. Neither does a good Christian. A good Christian isn't in this thing to just miss hell and make heaven their home. A Christian is in this thing because they have fallen in love with Jesus Christ and it's a love affair. Hallelujah. And you're doing this because you love the Lord. You sing because you love the Lord. You pray because you love the Lord. You read your Bible because you love the Lord. You set your faith toward heaven because you love the Lord. You've got a love affair going on with Jesus. And He fills your mind with the good things of heaven. Hallelujah. And you know that you know that you know you're all right. Because you love God and God loves you and you're having an affair with one another. Amen. I mean, we, we've had a, I would say we have, but I haven't 
Julie's had a really tough year this year. She was out, first of the year she was out sick. They couldn't find out what was wrong with her. They, they, they found out that she was having a pancreatitis and, and, and they didn't know what they were going to do about that. They were treating her for pancreatitis only to find out that it was her gallbladder and that, that, that uh, her gallbladder had caused the pancreatitis and they were going to have to take her gallbladder out. Now watch this. I'm going to show you how God works things. I'm going to show you how God works things. Uh, they took uh, what do you call it? When they do a, a film? Ultrasound. ultrasound. They took an ultrasound and said that her, her gallbladder was full of stones. And it was going to have to come out. Isn't that what they said? Said it was full of stones. It was going to have to come out. <coughs> the doctor that did the surgery to take her gallbladder out said there was not one stone in her gallbladder. Now you can believe what you want to believe because I do believe there was a bunch of gallstones in there. Based on her symptoms and based on what she was going through and how sick she was and how down she was, I believe there was gallstones there. But I also believe that God healed her. Amen. Now, I don't know if the doctors are scratching their head and saying, I wonder what was wrong. But the surgeon said, I saw, and he said, I saw. I saw it. But when we took it out, there was none in there. There's got to be a God somewhere. Amen. Now, she was out of work for her. Three months. Almost three months. Then she went back to work and she was back to work about three weeks and had a car accident. Guy ran a stop sign and hit her broadside. And she wasn't wearing a seatbelt, which was which actually turned out to be a good thing. Sometimes I mean, it's the law you're supposed to wear them. Now, I got I gotta confess to you, I don't wear one. I should, but I don't. Now that's on me. Until my insurance company tells me you got to wear one, you're not insured, and I guess I'll just sneak around with that one. I reckon I don't know. Anyway, it's constricting to me. Maybe I need to lose some weight. <laughs> Amen. Maybe that's the <laughs> Oh, that's seven. Yeah. <laughs> now she now she just went back to work. This this happened June the seventeenth, and she just went back to work this last Tuesday of this last week, and she's only been able to work half days because of so much pain. Now the insurance company are they're acting like that they're not wanting to give anything. And our, 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 our idea is they'll either do it or we'll get a lawyer. I don't want to get a lawyer. I don't believe in suing folks. I don't believe in doing that. But I don't believe in getting walked all over either. And I've saw my wife suffer. She's still suffering from it. And they're going to pay it. Oh, I'm not looking for millions of dollars. Just make it right. Amen. Just, just make it right. Amen. Twenty, twenty-five thousand dollars and make it all right. Amen. And that's not enough. Fifty would be better. I could probably get me something if I got. She got fifty. She might loan me some money. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. That helped me move back to Missouri. Yeah, I could leave on county and say, <laughs> But I told you that to get to this. Her mind has stayed stable through the entire mess. She's had days where she was down. You ever have a down day? You ever have a day where you just didn't think he's going to make it? 
She's had days where she wondered if she was going to make it or not, but she always made it. Her mind was stayed upon the healing power of Christ. Hallelujah. Where we let our minds go is where we let our life go. There are five areas of your mind that you need to be renewed in order to reach the goals that God has for you. Five areas. We'll give them to you real quick here. Number one, you must believe that God has a plan for your life. God has a plan for everybody's life. You are not left out. He has a plan for you. He said he had a plan for Jeremiah before Jeremiah was even in his mother's womb. You were not birthed by an accident. We had uh, uh, my uh, brother and sister-in-law, their, their oldest son, they just had a baby. Just How long is he Liam? Just about a week old. And when he was born, they said he had problems. He had some kind of, help me out here, some kind of infection. That, yeah, they thought he had strep B. So that, that's not good. So they did all kinds of tests and, 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 and they were, they put him on all kinds of antibiotics and the strep that they thought he had was not curable. They said it's, it's just nothing they can do. Now you know when you get news like that, all kinds of thoughts go through your mind. It floods your mind with all kinds of thoughts. People went to praying. The doctor came back after they, they, they sent some specimens to Riley Hospital and the doctor came back with this report. It was a false positive report. In other words, it tested positive but it really wasn't positive. Now, my belief way is it was positive. But God healed him. That's how I like to believe it. That God healed that baby. He was in church this morning, looking well. Looks like a temple's. <laughs> looks like, he does. He looks like just like a temple. He looks like he looks like Grandpa Temple. JD. JD. He does. JD wasn't that old man. He can't do anything to me now. He's in the grave. He can't get it back out. Yeah. 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 You know, people. Well, hey, let me give you a secret about babies. When they come and they look at your baby and they say, oh, ain't he cute? They're lying to you. <laughs> when they really think a baby's cute, they'll say, boy, ain't he pretty? Or, man, he is a good looking baby. But when they say he's cute, they're actually saying he's ugly, but I don't want to tell you that. <laughs> Now, I don't know about you, but I've seen some ugly babies. Have you got any pictures? I probably do. <laughs> some, ugly babies, some ugly babies, and you just don't have the nerve to say, Mama, that's the ugliest kid I've ever seen in my life. You don't want to do that. Fill her mind with junk. But a bonnet, huh? Beholders, we're all beautiful. Yeah, yeah. We're all beautiful in the eyes of God. We really are. We really are. Now I don't know what kind of eyesight that means God has. <laughs> That's it. I don't know if he wears glasses or not. Uh, okay. 
Number one, you must believe God has a plan for your life. Number two, you must believe you were chosen from the foundations of the world. Amen. You must believe that you were chosen before you ever accepted Jesus Christ. Yes, you were chosen. You are a chosen people. A royal priesthood. A holy nation. Glory to God. A light in this darkened world. You've been chosen. Number three. You must believe that outside circumstances, I love this one, that outside circumstances do not control your destiny. Got to believe that outside circumstances do not control your destiny. It's what's on the inside, not the outside, that is really dri dri driving and drawing you to the facts of life. All things work together for good to those that love God and are called according to His purpose. You've been called to a purpose. God has predestinated you for a purpose. It's yours to have. So you got to believe that what's going on on the outside is not what's going to dictate on what's going on on the inside. Huh? I, I, I am amazed... I, every time I see him, I, 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 I am so I am so amazed about Zach. Because you would think by looking at him and listening to him that he ain't got a clue what's going on. But he knows everything is happening. And he knows when he wants his way. Yeah. He said, I want to go home. I'm ready to go home. And that's what he wanted. That's what that's what he got. I want to go home. Want to go home. You be amazed at how how slick people's minds are. You may be sitting next to a genius and don't even know it. <laughs> now I don't know which side that's on, where it's the left or the right. I don't know which side it's on. <laughs> Hope it's the left. <laughs> You've got to believe that you have a destiny. Everybody say destiny. destiny. You've got to believe that you have a destiny. You've got to get that in your mind. I have a destiny. There is somewhere God wants me to go. There's someplace God wants me to end up. I have a destiny. I have a work to do. I have things that's got to be taken care of. I got a job to do. I'm called by the Lord to do particular things. I'm called to praise Him. I'm called to magnify His name. I'm called to love Him. I'm called to lift Him up. I'm called, I'm called, I'm called, I'm called to ring the joys of heaven. Hallelujah. And let people know there's a God that lives and a Jesus that saves. Hallelujah. And we're free and free indeed. Hallelujah. And nothing can take that away from us. Nothing can take that away from us. Aren't you glad? <laughs> See, when God does it for you, nobody else can undo it. <coughs> but you. True. <coughs> but you. You can undo it. <coughs> when God places something on your heart to do, he will equip you to do it. And you can do it if you don't talk yourself out of it. And if you talk yourself out of it and keep that quarter 
then the bus driver's going to know that you're a thieving preacher. <coughs> Knows everybody in town. Yeah. Just you don't you don't have to raise your hand, you don't have to say man, you don't have to smile. Matter of fact, you probably need to just look straight ahead. But how many of you would get the quarterback? See, I believe that. I believe you're being honest. You'd have gave the quarterback. What? Is hell worth a quarter? Think about you think about your children. Listen, 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 listen. Whoever whoever told you that when children get out of the house that everything's all right is it, lied to you. And I'm telling you what, you do more parenting after they're out of the house than you did when they were in the house. That is true. And you're always you're always wondering about it, always thinking about it. They, they're on your mind. 
All the time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow I don't think they can do without you, Lisa. Neither can we. Oh, there's a battle right there, isn't there? Yeah, I know another church that wants you. Serious business. Now they want you to come and do the praise and worship down at J Temples. No, I'm serious. I'm serious. Vincent's live here. Huh? Vincent's live here. No, I'm serious. Jay, Jay asked me, he said, you, you think you think Pat would let her go? I said, I I, I don't I don't know. She messed up with some Nazarene preacher too, so I don't so I don't know. <laughs> but that is true. We don't write here. That's his block. Okay. Alright. You here's another. You must believe that God's desire has the best for you. You must believe that God's desire has the best for you. In other words, God's looking for you to come out a winner. Amen. God has not endorsed your losing. He endorses your winning. He rejoices when you win. Heaven rejoices when you win. They don't rejoice when you lose a battle. They rejoice when you win. You are birthed a winner. No weapon formed against you can prosper. Hallelujah. Huh? He that is in you is greater than he that is in the world. You can do all things through Christ which strengthens you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. God has birthed you for victory. Whether you ever walk in it or not, he's birthed you for victory. Victory is yours. I don't I don't post too awful much on Facebook, but uh, here the last I, I think it's about four days last week I posted something and every time but every time I post something on Facebook it has to do with victory. Yeah. It has to do with victory. Today's your day of victory. Yeah. Amen. And I've had people talk back to me and say I did that. I, I, I needed that. I'll receive that blessing Hallelujah. today. Praise God. I remember one day they said, this is your day of breakthrough. This is your day of breakthrough. Hallelujah. I didn't just sit down and think that up. God gave that to me. Thank you, Lord. God gave that to me. To be an encouragement to somebody else. I just don't want to sit down and just write something to be writing something. I want it to mean something. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Help give life to somebody. Help bring peace to somebody's mind. Yeah. Help someone to understand that God has the best for them. Amen. Not the worst, but the best. He came that you might have life and life more abundantly. How many is living an abundant life? Hallelujah. Thank God for abundant living. Hallelujah. We can have an abundant life. It's not too late. Praise God. Glory to God. You must, you must begin to think excellent in order to become excellent. You must think excellent in order to become excellent. I have 
to watch myself because I've, I've got I've got a little older and I ain't trying to get no wife. I've already got a wife, so I ain't trying to get nobody to look at me or or, or, or I don't know what I'd do if they did. <laughs> Just run and tell Julie. <laughs> run and tell Julie. She looked at me. Uh, <laughs> But I, 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 so I had to watch myself because sometimes Julia would say, will you run to the dollar store for me? Well, the dollar store, if, if you know where Gosport's at, we just, we live in those apartments. Now, I'm not telling you which one. <laughs> we live in those apartments right behind the dollar store. That's where we live. <coughs> so she said, say, will you run over to the dollar store and get such and such? I'll have one pair of shorts and, and an old t-shirt and just got some last night's food on it or something. <laughs> yeah, a uh, little spittle of gravy or whatever. Hey, Joe. I'll get, I'll get up. And my hair will be going this way from the way I was sleeping. Julie's always like saying, push your hair back that way. You look like you've been in bed all day. Well, the matter is, I have. <laughs> she said, you're not going down there looking like that, are you? Take some pride in yourself. Maybe that's a YouTube. You're aware of that, is it? Yeah. <laughs> Ain't nobody here. There are people who do care. Yes. So I try to change my shirt. <laughs> Leave my shorts on. I get heavy in a pair of shorts. Get, leave my shorts on with my little skinny legs. Bird legs. Oh, I, son, I've got a set of bird legs you wouldn't believe. Jesus. You ought to see it without the socks on because the ankle is really small. And I do have some cover up because instead of taking time to comb my hair, I can put a cap on. There you go. I wear a cap a lot. That's my comb a lot. You're going to say, take some pride in yourself. Well, you know what? She's right. She really is. Take some pride in yourself. People are watching you. Yes. Now, now, if you just had a flat tire and you got tire dirt all over you, your hands are all dirty and nasty, that's another story. <coughs> but if you just came from the house, people's going to see how you lay around in the house. That's another story for them. <coughs> and listen, I've seen some sights go in the dollar store. Uh -oh. Wow. <laughs> I've seen some sights and think, where in the world did they come from? That one was from Mars. Had to be. Now, if you're having a sad day, a really sad day, and you can't get your mind to have peace and you're really sad. Drive down to Walmart. And sit on a bench. Get your coat. Get your coat. <laughs> and, and sit there and people watch. It is the funniest thing you've ever seen in your life. You will leave with laughter, I guarantee it. You will leave with laughter. Did you leave with laughter? I was sitting up at Walmart one time at the Big Rainbow, and I don't even know the story. I don't know that many people in the Big Rainbow. Y'all had their head dragged on the ground. It was a little sad. They had their mindset. Yeah. Not only, I think, just a few people. See? They were beautiful. They were stronger than her. 
they all had their mindset on something else. That's the way the world is. That's the way the world is. What's good about it? What's good about the world? What's good about it? Yeah, what's good about it? Yeah, I like even the cashier that won't smile. And he said, why aren't you smiling? I didn't do anything to you. And you ought to be happy because I've been in your line and if I wasn't in your line, you wouldn't have a job. I've told him that before. I have said that before. You ought to be rejoicing. Oh my God, here we got another one. We've got 15 people in line. I mean, well, quit griping. The electronic thing does it for you anyway. Amen. You don't have to do it like I had to do it back when I worked for Standard Grocery. Amen. You had to punch it all in yourself. We didn't have those. We didn't have those barcodes just to zip by. I just punch it all in ourselves and had to figure up the taxes in your mind. And we'd sell stuff for 39 and a half cents. Now that made a lot of sense to me. Because I put up, I would put up freight too and then run the cashier, cash register, and, and, and we'd, we'd price it up 39 and one half cent. What do you charge the person when it's 39 and one half cent? You charge them 40 cents. So why didn't you just put 40 cents on there to begin with? <laughs> yeah. 345.9. Why don't they just say 346? How come they got to do that? Someone's playing games with us. Someone's playing games with us. It makes you. It makes you. It makes it sound cheaper. Because people will say I can get it for thirty four three three forty five. Now I know you can get it for three forty five here in Marketville because I just seen it a while ago. You, you can get it for three forty five. Actually, it's three forty five nine. But you're gonna tell everybody I can get it for three forty five in Marksville. <laughs> Rather than saying I can get it for 346. Because what you're paying for is 346. <laughs> I'm playing with your mind now, huh? You got that all together now? You figured it all out? What you're paying for the pump? I don't even look at it, man. I just get the gas and go. I gotta have the gas to begin with. Praise God, why mess with it? Just get it and go. Gotta have the right frame of mind. You getting anything out of this? <clears throat> the fifth one you must begin to think excellent in order to be excellent Amen. that's the fifth one you must begin to think excellent in order to live excellent Now let me give you some things here, and I'm going to give me give me five more minutes here, and I'm going to run through these real quick. Let me give you some things on on getting your mind straightened up to where it costs you to, to discover your destiny. Your destiny is not something that someone will tell you. Your destiny is something you'll discover. You'll discover it with your talents and the abilities that God's given you. Know what's in your know what your real desire is, not what everyone else is telling you. I mean, come on now. Let, let's let's just let's let's just let's just be real for a minute. Let's be real for a minute. If you can't sing, there's no need of you paying good money to travel to wherever American's Idol's at <laughs> and try to get on there. Amen. <coughs> It just ain't gonna happen. Have you ever seen them try out for a Have you ever wondered what was in their minds? 
I mean, you know good well they can't think. Surely they can't think they sound that good. What goes through your mind that allows people to be on I like that. Well, it's money. It's programming. It's money. They have to have some money. Gotta have somebody make fun of I'd go in for a million bucks. And I can't carry a tune in a bucket. But I'll tell you what, I'd sure try. They'd say, we need, a, we need someone just to be a funny man up here. I'd do it. Give a million bucks, I'll be a funny man for five minutes. I can act stupid and be embarrassed for a little while. I'll get over the embarrassment for a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. I'm almost done. Recognize your passion. Don't let someone tell you what your passion is. You recognize your passion. And your passion is what's driving inside of you. That better be God. <laughs> oh, I only charge $10 for rent. <laughs> Understand your gifting. Understand your gifting. That's what flows naturally from you. Know what you can give or what you want to give 100% of the time. And last but not least, recognize what areas you produce good fruit. Recognize what areas you produce good fruit. All of these are a result of a mind that is set on Jesus Christ. Set to be what God's called me to be. See, I can't. I can't do anything but preach. Or but teach. Sometimes I'm in a, sometimes I'm just in a preaching mood. Other times I'm in a teaching mood. More of a teaching mood tonight than preaching. But I sometimes I'm just caught up in, in whatever it is. And, and, and but but I made up my mind that whichever one it is, I'm gonna be good at it. Because people's lives depend on it. Amen. People's lives depend on it. Let's pray. Father, I thank you, Lord, for your word. I thank you, Lord, that we can have a, a mind of Christ. That your, that your mind can work in us. The fullness of glory. Lord, I pray, God, tonight that you touch every being that's in this place. Touch them with your, with your love and your grace and your mercy. Lord God, give them the desires of their heart tonight, Lord. And we'll give you praise and glory. In Jesus' precious name. And everybody said amen. 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 Just before you go tonight, if there's anyone that needs prayer, I want to pray for you. If you need prayer, come on, I want to pray for you real quick. If not, I want to turn the service over to the Pastor. Okay, Pastor, are you ready? I talked this morning out of the, uh, the, uh, there's a 24 song about uh, who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord. And then I went back to the 15th Psalm where it said, who shall abide in his holy hill? And, and, uh, and, I, and uh, I talked to you, the first thing you have to see it, and that's what he's trying to do is get you, you to see it. You've got to see there's a better level for you to live at. You, you don't have to come in here and agree with everything he said. Well, that was great. Is one of them going out and not take any of it. No, when you really see it, and you and you need security, it's called the eternal security of the believer. You got you need security. You need to understand that Jesus Christ loves you today, and He's going to love you tomorrow, and He's going to love you clean out into eternity. Because that's the way He fixed it. Amen. He sent His love upon you before you ever heard of Him or laid eyes on Him. In fact, the Bible said that while we were yet in our sin, He died for us and gave Himself for us. Yes, he did. 
So we, we didn't have a whole lot in the thing. We just finally said yes to the Lord. Right. And I'm going to tell you, surrender. They said, I, I surrender tonight. We talked about surrender. We've been talking about the importance of surrender. There's a point in your life where you have to surrender to the will of God. Yeah, yeah. Or you'll look up 20 years from now and you'll still be trying to figure it all out. But if you just surrender, this is not your gospel. This is His gospel. Amen. We, we never was worthy of it. Never will be. Couldn't give enough money to buy it. Couldn't do enough good works to earn it. And it couldn't dress good enough to look the part. Couldn't give enough money. No. Amen. It's all, it's His gospel. And so we just seek to do His will. And I'm going to tell you something. It's a lot easier to live for the Lord if you can get to the place where you're dwelling in that holy hill, in that high place in God, where you're really working, amen, towards what you want in God. Because if you say, if you seek, you shall find. If you ask, you shall receive. If you not, it shall open unto you. That's for you and you and you and whosoever will. Let him come. He didn't choose, choose me and he's not going to choose you. He said, whosoever will. But most people say, that's good for you. And you can see it for me. He said, oh, Brother Pat, he's a good old boy. He deserves it. I mean, some might say that. And, uh, but, <laughs> but for yourself, what about you? God wants that for you. And He wants you to understand that you have a right to that. It's called laying hold upon eternal life. you got to take hold of it. And it's real. And some of you are just now coming to the knowledge of it, see. But first you have to see it. We, we talked about a paradigm shift. I told a lesson here several years ago. Sister reminds me of, of from time to time about the paradigm shift. And I've heard in the last revival was mentioned at least a half a dozen times that we need a paradigm change, a paradigm shift, a different way of looking at things. We see things through what we've been raised in, what our culture is, what, what, uh, and so we put up barriers against us. Oh, I can't have that because we got to get a paradigm shift, see, uh, that says now, right now, today, whatever shape we're in, are we the sons of God? It's not someday we're going to be. Oh no, right now, today, you may not. Recognize yourself as a son of God, but He sent His love upon you, and He chose you, and He called you. Now He wants to get you to that place where you can actually feel like a son, and you can acknowledge acknowledge being a son. Can you say Amen? Well, that's the kind of stuff we've been uh, teaching, uh, brother, and it, it is so needful for us to know what we're doing. Jesus said, "Come unto Me and learn of Me, for I am meek and lowly of heart." and you shall find rest for your soul. I want you to know something. God is not your opponent. God is not your enemy. He's on your side. He chose you. And He chose you because He first loved you. Before you ever even thought about loving Him. I mean, it's a long time before I really loved Him. Because He was way out to the cosmos someplace. I didn't even know who He was or where He was. Amen. But I've come to know Him now. Amen. He was going to get you, God. That's the kind of God I know. God's going to get you. God's going to get you. Watch out. Yeah, God will get you with this. God's going to get you with that. I was telling Brother Mike about how we, we, we grew up, everybody had a devil. You got a devil? I got a devil. All God's children got a devil. I mean, we had lots of devils. We, had, we even had uh, uh, clothing devils. We had open toed shoe devils. We had haircut devils. We had jewelry devils. Anything that people didn't agree with is a devil. Everybody had devil. And I was a young minister and I was so confused and trying to find my way. And I drove all the way up to Tipton, Indiana. And his name is Brother Leonard Oot, and he was a wonderful evangelist back in his day. He was an evangelist through central Indiana, became a bishop in his organization. And he wrote the song to be like Jesus. To be like Jesus on earth. I long to be like him. And he wrote, Are You in the Church Triumph? He wrote some great gospel songs. He was a great man of God. And I got to sit in his living room, and he was in his 80s. And I told him, I said, uh, uh, My pastor, I love my pastor dearly. 
But all they talk about is devils. Devils. You're going to get paid for and they shake the devil out of it. You know, yeah, they're going to shake the devil out of it. Somebody come up now, maybe they'll shake or something, I don't know. And next thing you know, they're casting devils out of it. And they cast the same devils out of the same people over and over and over. Now, I mean, that's what we put up with. And I said, I got to, I got to find the truth. I mean, this is killing me. I got to have some security. I heard that Baptist talk about this eternal security of the believer. God would love to have some of that. But I just didn't believe it in the, in, in the way that some of them believed in it. And I just, I just, I just couldn't see it. You know. But now I understand, I know that I'm saved. I've been saved, and I am saved. And as long as I'm willing to confess my sin, He's faithful to forgive my sin. Amen. Hallelujah. I can come for Him every day and say, Lord, you know me, I'll see it again. It's me again, Lord. i got a prayer that needs an answer. It's me again, Lord. i got a problem that I can't solve. Hallelujah. And and feel and not even worry about being worthy or having any part of it. Because I figured it out. I'm not. I'm not worthy. Never have been. Never will be. But I'll tell you one thing, I'm thankful. I've learned to love him. Even and that invisible God out there in the cosmos that became what a friend I have in Jesus. Oh, I can count on him. I can call on him. And he'll show me which way to go. And many times when I, he don't even show me which way to go, I just lay it over in his lap and follow along. And I look up and the problem is solved. God takes care of it. Sure, that's what it's all about. I'm living, amen, on the mountain beneath a cloudy sky. I'm drinking from the fountain that never shall run dry. How's the old song go? You know what I'm saying. I'm eating from the manna a bountiful supply. And I'm dwelling in new land. Hallelujah. See, we can dwell in this. That's what I was talking about this morning. When we not only see that place, there's a place for you. And it's all part of your calling. He's calling you to a place. Some preachers talk about it being the secret place. He's got a place for you. And in that place is refuge. And in that place is prayer answered. And in that place is satisfaction. In your soul, lay down, sleep at night. Say good night, Jesus. I love you, Lord. I give it all to you. And get up in the morning. Say good morning, Lord. Walk with me today and feel Him so close as I go about my business. Amen. He's always there. Amen. He, he's one to stick closer than a brother. Yes. And I know you've heard enough. Now, I tell you, that's that's my heart. So being poured out to you, and I'm expecting to hear more from God about how. To walk closer with Him. Because He loves us, children. But when we go in now, find pasture. And it's so world. We go in and we come out. We always have to come back out because of this flesh. But one of these days, this place is going to be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. And we'll go in and we won't come back out. Woo! Glory to God. One of these days, we're going to go in. And we won't have to worry about no Facebook. We won't have to worry about nothing. Amen. I said, he's been reading Facebook too much. That's not know what's wrong with him. <laughs> Hallelujah. And there's good in, in anything. You can make good out of anything. And there's just some people, how in the world, they get on there and talk about all that silliness. And I only know because people tell me, but I don't need that. At least I'll tell you, she's my computer. She takes care of my computer work. That's what I just don't get in the back. Uh, they lost me way back there somewhere. I got lost way back in the 60s. I got, I got lost in the 60s. <laughs> it came another world for me. Hallelujah. They lost me. And leave it to me for went by, they lost me. When the Lone Ranger went by, they lost me. And all the cowboy shows went by, I still love them. And they lost me. Put on a good cowboy show and I'll watch it. Hallelujah. But there's a lot of trash on I wouldn't spend 10 minutes on. Amen. I'll tell you one thing. I love the time that we have together as a children of God. Standing together in heavenly places. Being fed this manacle, this manna from a bountiful supply. I praise you. Well, listen. We're going to have a good week this week. We want you to come and take part and get in this thing. And God's going to feed us with that manna. 
and drinking from that fountain that never shall run dry. God bless you. I love you. I appreciate everybody. Go home. Go home. Tell them to the world.